Watch now as I take you down a road that is less traveled in the field of medicine. You've seen all the doctors taking many tests and pills, but you keep getting worse. Do you know why? Welcome to Know the Cause. Hi, I'm Michelle Mann. You've seen me on Know the Cause. I have struggled with heart failure and uh, seizures. I've had a cyst on my ovary, and now I'm recovering. I'm three years on phase one diet and doing great. And the man who helped me was Doug Kaufman, so here he is. He can help you, too. Okay, you know what the day is going to be like, right? When we open with a bottle of uh, champagne and bread and all sorts of goodies down here, we're going to talk about food a little bit and its role in something called inflammation. You remember my old book, my uh, The Fungus Link to Weight Loss, it used to be called What Makes Bread Rise? And that would conjure up this idea of yeast rising and people rising too. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Kyle Drew joins us. Kyle, come on up. Come on. Come on, come on. Kyle's going to be here talking with us about all this good stuff we see in front of us. Good to see you. Thank oh, you yeah. for coming in. And of course, Kyle has some supplements that helps take the inflammation yeah. away. So all sorts of good fun. Dr. Cowden's going to be right smack in the middle of the show. By the way, what causes numbness? He's going to answer that. And then toward the end of the show, let's start starving yeast with our diet. Only have really good food. Denny's going to be here. All that and more on and today's, today's Know the Cause. <laughs> So you've got a chronic backache. You've got horrible stomach problems. You can't lift your arms very high. Your head hurts. You've got an ear that's causing problems. You have something the doctor calls chronic inflammatory disease, right? And there's nothing we can do about it except take NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, or a little Tylenol, yada, yada, yada. Boy, they're selling trillions of dollars worth of aspirin and things like that. But it may all start with this little guy right here. Isn't that a strange looking thing. That is very much like a human cell. You see the nucleus with the DNA in it. This is a yeast cell. God forbid, folks, if yeast cells and human cells get together. You've got something, it's called a hybrid cell in your body, and you know my thoughts on these things. Um, Time Magazine here several years ago, I think it was Kyle and I were talking before the show, we actually introed this nine years ago, uh, in 2004 the secret killer. And look here what it says a little bit below or if you blow this up. The surprising link between inflammation and heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, and other diseases. Look at the surprising link. But isn't it interesting that people with Alzheimer's, you know, they, they have swelling going on in their body. People with cancer have swelling going on. People with heart attacks have swelling going on. And now there's markers, right? We can draw blood. It's called C-reactive protein or CRP. It's a test that the doctor will say, wow, your CRP is up. You must have a lot of inflammation in your body. Okay, why? Okay, doc, I know my, I have a lot of inflammation. Why? Maybe today... Uh, will be very helpful to you. Remember, inflammation is your friend. We look at it in American medicine as your enemy and link it with cancer and horrible diseases. Here's the definition. It's when protective tissues respond to injury or destruction of tissues which serve to destroy, dilute, or wall off both the injurious agent, the poison, the mycotoxin, etc., and the injured tissue. So, see, inflammation isn't such a bad thing after all. What causes it? That's what today's show is all about. When the CRP goes up, I've done this before. I had a PowerPoint and did it on this show. One of the things that elevates C-reactive protein is yeast and fungus. Does that make sense to you? What makes bread rise? Inflammation can be listed on the death certificate, but what caused the inflammation? Here we have in the Journal of uh, Immunology, certain mycotoxins activate inflammatory responses. Here in infection and immunity a few years back, human white blood cells from normal subjects produce pro-inflammatory responses when exposed to yeast. So the bottom line, the take home message, yeast, fungi, and their mycotoxins cause inflammation. Now here's a guy that knows a lot about this because Kyle, you used to be sick and have yeah. a whole lot of health problems. As a matter of fact, you were never a client of mine, but you should have no, been. I know, I should have been. 
That's uh, we met uh, 10, 13 years yeah. ago or so. Yeah. And tell the folks first, you had health problems. Yeah, I was sick with uh, a lot of different conditions. I was depressed. Hmm. I uh, I had so many skin conditions, psoriasis, asthma, yeah. psoriasis. It was covering the body, and so. As a guy who loved nutrition, but loved conventional nutrition, my idea was I would chase every one of these different uh, symptoms with supplements. Yeah. And I didn't see that there was a link with all of these things put together. And probably I would have fallen for the inflammation thing had I not ever met you or found Know the Cause. But what Know the Cause did was really give a unifying theory of everything. It's mm. saying, well, yeah, there's inflammation, but what caused the inflammation? Yeah, there's coughing, but what caused the coughing? Yeah, there's pain, but what caused the pain? I love that kind of questioning because it's drilling down to the real issue, what is the cause? And once I figured that out, thanks to you, I stopped having to chase symptoms yeah, every yeah. single symptom, if I could get down to the root cause, then everything else, if I could get to the root, the branches would take care of themselves. And it really opens your eyes, folks, to both supplements. Now yeah. you understand why olive leaf and caprylic acid exactly. and, and oregano and these things are so helpful. And it opens your eyes also to diet. Oh, yeah. There can be pro-inflammatory foods, foods that cause inflammation. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at this. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. You know. And hello. How many people, exactly, how many people drink alcohol at a wedding or something and end up with a migraine headache? You know, the next morning, gee, yeah. I just don't feel good. Or how many drink too much of it and notice the neurological effect of mycotoxins? That's what alcohol is. It's so. a concentration of mycotoxins. In bread, it's a little bit more diluted, so it's not as profound yeah, as exactly. it is when you drink alcohol. Exactly. So when we get back from this break, we're going to talk about something called FUPO, fungus until proven otherwise. Kyle is a pro at this. He named it, and it's time we start heeding his information. Don't go away. I've learned a lot from watching Doug's show, and, and that is read, study, look up things, and question everything you've heard so far. I had a bad earache for over a year that was treated with several different kinds of antibiotics, all the way from gram-positive, gram-negative antibiotics, urinary tract antibiotics, uh, tetracyclines, penicillin, augmentin, you name it, never got better. I saw in Doug's show, he mentioned something about a lot of things like sinus infection and earaches are caused by fungus. So I got a prescription for some Diflucan antifungal, took it for two weeks and was cured. So the idea is uh, there's something out there that might help you. Just keep looking. The guy's name was Anton Van Leeuwenhoek. How about that for a name? A Dutch glass grinder. 1650 was the year. That's back a few hundred years ago. So this guy is uneducated and he's grinding up glasses for spectacles that people could see things bigger. You guys know the story there. And he sets two pieces of glass down in a little puddle of water and he peers down and he would invent what today is called little beasts. He saw little moving things. For the first time, folks, the first microscope, he saw little moving things. Today, you and I and all pathologists know that those are bacteria and protozoa and fungi and so forth, but this guy saw it first. Remember, uneducated. He would go on to have been given credit for discovering the red blood cells, the way they rouleau, stack like pancakes, once outside the human body. Uh, he also authored 30 papers to the Royal Dutch Society where he discussed his little beasts. I mean, these things are amazing. And so he developed the first microscope and so forth. Remember, totally uneducated. Well, zoom forward hundreds of years with me. The Center for Disease Control said last week that valley fever diagnoses are up 1,000%. 1,000% in a 13-year period. All of a sudden, doctors see more and more valley fever, and they say, gee, there must be more of this fungus, coccidio imitis. We talk about it on Know the Cause. There must be more of this fungus out there. Folks, what's happening, you can see the parallel. What's happening is they're now using Van Leeuwenhoek's discovery. They're able to see that that wasn't a cold, that wasn't influenza, that was fungus. All along, the patients have been coming into him for 12 years, and they've probably not been diagnosing it accurately. You see, the number of cases has gone up only because 
they could now see the little beast. They're able to diagnose it because now they probably watch, know the cause, and they realize the little beasts are out there and they may get some of us. Just my take. Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. Did you know that one of the best fats you can eat is coconut oil? It has lauric acid in it, which boosts your immune system, and a strong immune system is the best defense against cancer. Lauric acid is antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial. Coconut oil also stabilizes blood sugar levels, and that's really important because sugar is cancer's favorite food. So consider taking a couple of spoonfuls of good quality coconut oil every day. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. The same book that taught me that my people perish for lack of knowledge, God said this, also teaches in the Old Testament there are 32 references to not using yeast. This show, as you now know, is all about mold, mildew, and fungus. Well, if you have a fungal condition, know that we feed it. What foods feed fungus? Know that there are safe supplements to help remediate it inside your body, and lifestyle plays a great role in eliminating it. How do you learn more about what we're teaching here? Go to my website, knowthecause.com. You know, so many of you tell me that you've tried the phase one diet, you've taken these antifungals, and yet you're left with pain. We turned to Dr. Lee Cowden and asked, I have numbness in my hands and feet. Why? When you get uh, numb hands and feet, that's uh, labeled by uh, conventional medicine as a peripheral neuropathy, and very commonly that has to do with toxicity in the nerves. Uh, for example, diabetics get that condition, and it's from a lot of sugar accumulation in the uh, nerves, so the nerves get damaged. Other people that don't have diabetes at all get the problem, and it has to do with uh, you know heavy metals or pesticides or other things accumulating in the nerves. And when you detoxify sufficiently, oftentimes that goes away completely. You know, Dr. Cowden's, you remember the Shell Answer Man? <laughs> Dr. Cowden is like the Shell Answer Man. Yeah. Any question we have, we go to him and he just rolls it right He's off. He's got it. Yeah, so there's that, but so many of us are left running from doctor to doctor to doctor, especially my age. Not so much your age group, but my age group. Because we live in chronic pain mm -hmm. caused by inflammation. Right, and it's the, and, it, and I'm glad you said chronic because whenever you have an injury yeah. and something is swollen up, uh, that's an acute inflammation. And we were talking before the show and I said that in, in the world of Chinese medicine, they have yeah. this saying, and I think it's really good. It says, when something is acute, treat the stem, when something is chronic, treat the root. Wow. You understand what that wow. means? Yeah. And so it's saying let's get to the root cause if you've got a chronic condition. So hold on, uh, aspirin and NSAIDs are treating the leaves, right. the, the stems, they're not treating the root. Exactly, so. and that's the point. And so that's why when we look at different natural, uh, when you read some of the, uh, the different things in here, fish oil, antifungal, Indian frank, oh man, if you think you know frankincense, you don't know frankincense. There's a lot to that one. Yeah. But antifungal, turmeric, again, hesperidin, quercetin, ginger, all of these spices are antifungal and anti-inflammatory, and that's the power of these things versus certain drugs that only do one thing and also come with a laundry list of side that's effects. That's what I was gonna say, Kyle. Even now, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory yeah. drugs are called NSAIDs. Even NSAIDs, we're now noticing, widen the gaps of cells in the intestine. So we get gut permeability. Leaky gut. Because we're on something for pain, to yeah. wit, medicine says, well, that's okay. There's gastroenterologists you can now go see. <laughs> so this pill gave me this problem. Now I'm going to this doctor. <laughs> Right, try to, we, we didn't name the show, try this drug. We could have, it was available. <laughs> but we named it Know the Cause, understand why you're in pain. You saw the slides. Inflammation can be caused by yeast, what makes bread inflamed. When we say inflammation, we're talking about swelling. It's a big way of saying swelling. Now, there are foods, Kyle, yeah. and we went into this in the beginning of the show. There are foods that contribute to inflammation, yep. and then there are anti-inflammatory foods. Even you look at the big web servers, Yahoo, they're all now saying these seven foods fight inflammation. 
And if you continue, you know, drinking your alcohol at night and yeah. eating bread with those foods, then it's all for naught. Right. You're just sort of canceling everything out. Yeah. And that's what phase one does so well. Again, it answers so many questions, and it's in one simple diet. It's one simple philosophy, so you don't have to think about a bunch of different things. Well, what about for inflammation? Well, what about migraines? Well, what about this? It's one simple thing, and the berries and all the fruits and the wonderful lean meats, perfect addition to an anti-inflammatory diet. A very smart guy some years ago called me, and he said, man, have I hurt my knee. And I've been to a oh. couple of doctors, and the doctors <laughs> want to do surgery. What should I do about it? You talk about inflammation. This guy's yeah. knee was as big as a watermelon. What did the guy do? Uh, the guy, <laughs> after he called you, the guy is standing right next to Doug right yeah, now. Yeah. The guy called you and said, uh, what do I do? And you said, you know what to do. Just do it. And mm -hmm. if at the end of two months it doesn't work, I'm sure you'll find a surgeon who will be happy to do the surgery. And so I began doing what is now called flexin. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a flexin at the time, and I put all of those ingredients together myself, but they have done it for you. So I did that, but I stayed on the phase one diet. And do you know it took a good month and a half? Yeah. But it didn't did a couple doctors it. tell you, even an oh, alternative doctor? Yeah, uh, some people that you and I both know that we really respect said, look, there's no getting through this with nutrition only. Guess what? Yes, there was. Yeah. And thank you yeah, yeah. for being the voice of reason and the voice of optimism, too. Sometimes we need that. Yeah, we all need that. And folks, we're often told, get to a doctor right away, and I believe in that. But if the doctor says this isn't so bad, Think about fungus first. Think about inflammation and swelling. Okay? Yeah. Don't go away. We're going to be right back with you. Magnesium is an absolutely essential mineral and almost all of us are deficient in it due to demineralization of our soils. It is one of my three treasures of the mineral world along with zinc and sulphur. Green leafy vegetables are the best food source and we should all have lots of those, but most of us need to supplement with extra magnesium. There is now good evidence that magnesium is critical for the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access, cardiovascular health, normal blood pressure, immune function, and low levels of magnesium cause anxiety and weight gain by increasing leptin levels. Magnesium deficiency also increases the risk of developing cancer. Now consider that published research in the American Journal of Epidemiology in 2002 showed that when the diets of 2,566 children ages 11 to 19 were studied, less than 14% of boys and 12% of girls had adequate intakes of magnesium, and we can stop wondering why there is so much illness in society. In my opinion, the best way of supplementing with magnesium is transdermally, absorbing the magnesium through the skin. I use magnesium gel regularly and bathe in magnesium salts, just like I would have done thousands of years ago if I had been sick and was sent to the mineral springs by the local healer. Not everyone shares my opinion on magnesium, but I'm okay with that. And I was reminded why in the last Harry Potter movie, as Remus Lupin faces the hordes of Death Eaters with a lone friend beside him, he whispers, it's the quality of one's convictions that determines success, not the number of followers. That made me smile. In the cold weather, do you like a bowl of hot cereal? Problem is that hot cereal can contribute to inflammation and continue your pain. I sat down with Denny a few weeks ago and she made something called hot not cereal. Now that's antifungal. Sometimes when it's cold outside or when it's not cold outside, mom used to make oatmeal, malt oatmeal, cream of wheat, all these great cereals. They were nice and warm. Well, we now have the hot not cereal that Denny's put together. Hot because it's hot, not because it's not grain. This is grain free it's, and right. it is delicious. Because it's not cereal. So it. what we're using instead of any grains is we're using um, almond meal. Almond or any nut. Or any ground nut. You could use pecans or walnuts. We have flaxseed um, ground, okay. again. 
Yep, because that liberates the good fats when exactly. you grind those seeds up exactly. right before you use them. And if you like the crunch of them, you can leave a exactly. few hole in there, but those exactly. aren't going to do you as much good as the ground ones. We have coconut, dried coconut, oh, not good. sweetened coconut. Okay. And you want to stir this all up, mix it all up a little bit, and then mm -hmm. what we have is, gosh, if I can pronounce this right, glucomannan. You did, did it. Did I get it you right? You did it. You okay. did it. Glucomannan. It's okay. A I know what it is. Soluble fiber. Yeah. I mean, it's a but, it's a fiber. It's a good fiber comprised of the sugar mannose and uh, comes from aloe. It comes from kojak root. You know, there's uh, kojak, konjak, konjak root. There's different kojak, sources, right? Kojak root. It's bald. <laughs> um, and it really is good as a fiber when you mix it in here and then hot and, and the reason we're using it is not not so much for the fiber content, but um, it's a thickener. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And we're using it hot, but it will even thicken things you just without heat. In That's just some almond milk that we okay. heated up. You could also use just water and then maybe add a splash of cream. You could use coconut milk, whatever mm -hmm. you like. Um, just but there's no grain. This is no phase grain. one friendly. Right. As you begin to add berries to it, strawberries, boysenberries, et cetera, it's still phase one. Sometimes children need a little more sweetener. Yeah, you could put a little bit of banana in it. Yep. Just, you know, dice up some bananas and put it in for kids. Kind of and you know what else I love in it is cinnamon, because um, cinnamon always kind of makes things taste sweeter. You could use a little nutmeg, and you could put a little stevia in, which I'm going to do to sweeten stevia, it. stevia, and mm -hmm. then a little cinnamon, which really yeah. makes... It, it just tasted... I cheated a little bit. Uh, I, I had some of this uh, made before the show. This is what it looks like. Uh, so so tasty. Yeah, Look at and that. it and it thickens up <gasps> as it so sits good. here. It'll thicken up in about just, uh, two or three minutes. It'll thicken up. Yeah, I mean it's easy to make. Phase one friendly. It gives you a breakfast. Run out of the house. Get something uh, warm in the belly. Really and, hearty. Uh, full of protein. Oh, it's just delicious. Okay, so I've I want to go back to my old bowl because that one's so hot and have a little taste of this. Hmm. This actually, to me, takes me back 40, 50 years. It's, it tastes just like mom used it, to make it. It's similar. It's a little, it's hearty, and it also has the protein in it that mm -hmm. grains wouldn't have. Yeah, so. this is delicious, and it's a hot, not cereal, because it's not cereal. You got it. Nice and warm in the morning. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> very, very good. My mom's mom, Grandma Weber, had diabetes, and her endocrinologist always told her to carry an orange in her purse. If she ever went into diabetic coma, she could cut the orange, eat it, and there would be enough sugar in her bloodstream to revive her, bring her out of that coma. Or so the story went. The orange meat, the apple meat, the grapefruit meat, we talk a lot about that on this show, but it's actually the skin sometimes in these fruits and vegetables that is so valuable. Scientists have discovered monoterpenes. There are several categories of these monoterpenes, but basically parallel alcohol is one of them. That's in the mints. These monoterpenes are from the oil in plants. That's from the mint family and cherries and cranberries. The other that we need to discuss right now is called lemonine. You hear me talk a lot about delemonine. Lemonine is orange oil, and it's got such a fascinating history. Go way back with me. The Romans used to prevent hangovers by eating the orange skin and getting the orange oil. But the Chinese used it as a remedy for coughs, colds, flus, pneumonias, and so forth. So it has a history that goes way, way back. Move forward with me now to the 20th century. A doctor at the University of Wisconsin, his name is Steve Clark, actually found that these monoterpenes inhibited breast cancer cells from fully developing. But can these also be used to prevent serious disease? That's exactly the research going on right now. It's fascinating as you follow down the line of the studies going on with natural things. These aren't pharmaceutical drugs. Here's the bottom line. PubMed, if you go to PubMed.gov and you type in monoterpenes and cancer, you get about 269,000 hits, papers you can look at. But if you go to the same PubMed.gov and you type in monoterpenes antifungal, you get about half the number, about 130, 135,000 reports. Isn't that exciting? D-lemony, orange oil, can help prevent 
or even treat serious diseases. Don't try this at home. Always talk to your doctor about this or find a good nutritionist who really understands this. The old adage, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, goodbye to that. It's orange peel a day. Can that keep an oncologist away? Have you ever heard of grain beetles? They could be nesting in your containers of flour, rice, oats, cornstarch, and cereal. You can't get them out of the grains. You have to throw away the infested foods. Measuring approximately two to three millimeters long, these bugs are tiny and very hard to see. You might need a magnifying glass to spot them. Whether or not you see them, I'm guessing you've eaten some in your lifetime. Sorry to freak you out. I just want to give you one more reason to avoid grains. There's bugs in them. Uh, I would be in a wheelchair today had I not done what I've done. I had MS. I had to leave work because I couldn't work anymore. Um, I was home maybe two years and um, I met a, a lady who I didn't really know too much. We started talking, she told me her story. She had reversed her cancer, her breast cancer naturally, and um, Doug was the beginning of, of her, her change, and she started me listening to Doug on Know the Cause. She started me reading his books, and that was four and a half years ago. Um, I've lost 50 pounds. I have basically reversed my MS. My message to everyone is no sugar, no dairy, no grains. It is that simple. It is. Well, we thought you needed a visual. So underneath me right now, that's a pan with some uncooked dinner rolls in it. It was put in an oven, but they didn't heat the oven up. John and uh, his wife did this. Yep. Kind of interesting. And you'll watch in the next minute and a half. That took two hours for those dinner rolls to slowly rise, right? It's going to take a minute and a half for our closing to uh, do that. But keep an eye on that as we're talking because that's what happened. Take home message today, inflammation. Yeah, with inflammation, if you first get down to the root, you're not going to have to chase the different symptoms and think that it's because of a different problem. Inflammation, they're very, very, very close when they say that inflammation might be the cause. But what caused the inflammation? There, I think you've got it. It's exactly analogous to, to something called gout. Uric acid is the cause. No, it isn't. Figured out what causes the uric acid, fungus. <laughs> and you'll figure out gout once and for all. Diet, folks, if you're in chronic pain or you, your doctor is telling you you've got a lot of inflammation, why wouldn't you try the dietary approach? It's called a phase one diet and it's fairly simple. And it's tasty too. I yeah. mean, we saw with Denny how good this can be. Your mouth waters, all the uh, cookbooks really reveal that. It's a lot easier than it was 20 years ago. Kyle, look, look down here, look at this rising. I mean, that <laughs> took, it did take two hours in real time. The point is, when you have that inflammation going on in your body, think yeast. That's what made that rise. You're Good right. to see you. Nice to see you. Thank man. you, Dr. Lee Cowden. Thank you, Denny. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time.